This episode will dive straight into a pretty advanced concept that you might have been frustrated about seeing in Skyhoy default configurations, and that is constant sets combined with um, uh, generators. Generators are um, a function in the layer tree that will dynamically generate layers, sublayers to a given layer or functions, which actually do not exist in the configuration, but they are generated based on a constant set. I can probably explain you why this would be useful because having an input selector like this one is really bad in a hard-coded way. I mean, this is the same action applied multiple times. It's just the input source changing. And ideally, this is something you did from the home screen. And that might also be true for your configuration because you might end up having configurations that you reuse multiple times for your clients. As you become a really a master configurator of Reactor, then you might find yourself creating your own constant sets that you can use from the home screen. So this is possible. We'll try to do that in this uh, episode. Hopefully it won't be too long, but it might. We'll just see how quickly we can go through this. But we will kind of leave the PDC section and only focus on the section over here for these. So um, the first thing you want to do is to create a constant set. And um, as a minimum, that constant set should include a, a field for the um, the, the value or the, um, the input of the button. And the way we have built our configuration here has something to say, because if I uh, click on any of these behaviors, it uh, is using a master behavior we've created called set preview with tally. And that is down here and it is based on set value. And that means that the way we are setting the input is with a constant called match value. So when we create a constant set, what we need to do is to create a constant set with a constant called match value inside because that is what gets applied right here. So um, I'll just go to Rack Fusion Live and I'll create a constant set which will name switcher, um, yeah, video inputs, just to find a new name that we've not used before. And as I'm creating this, and if I click it to see what is inside, I get this. Because of a bug in Reactor we currently have, I'm not able to edit my constant set um, right here. And now, so I need to go to the JSON just quickly and find my constant set. And what I've learned is that inside of here, if I add front end meta like this, we should be good again. So let's just check if this is true. Let's just go back to configuration and try this one out. Okay. So that seemed to be true, like show definition, create a new definition, and then I will have a new key, we'll call it match value, and we'll call this the um, uh, video input number. And we could add a description, but we won't. And then we'll say this is an integer, and we won't care about those things. Okay, so we have now set up this definition, and then we could, just let's see if we can figure out how this works. We can now add a new entry. And if we add a new entry, that could be source like source number one, source number two. Uh, we could just add a bunch of these. So if we prepare ourselves like this, how many do we have right now? 10, 11. OK, we'll just go here, pr press plus one. Now, we are on an ATEM switcher that doesn't have that many inputs. So um, that doesn't make sense. But I think still you can appreciate the idea of this. We have created this constant set with 11 constants, and it's all on this level, the Rack Fusion Live level, um, this configuration level right here. And now we want to generate these behaviors from this. OK, so uh, we I'm actually going to remove the definitions A1, 2, 3, 4 up to MP because these are the behaviors that we are going to substitute. Maybe just before we do so, let's just check here. This is the set preview with tally behavior match value. Okay, it's all nice. And let's just complete this. And also MP, we remove these, delete, confirm, yes, okay. Then what we do on this layer, or maybe we create a new layer to manage this, I kind of want to do that because it's it's good practice that we do this. So we will say me row, just have a new and you know, enclosing layer for the generator we are going to create right now. So we go to me row. I will now go and create a new generator here, and 
we have it here, we click it. This will, this will generate a bunch of behaviors from the video input constant set. We choose behaviors as the type, the source, and this is where we can read what is mentioned out here. We, um, we need the, the prefix constant set and then the name of the constant set, and that is video inputs. Okay, so constant set, or was it just constant set? Okay, so what is a constant set? It's a set of constants. It's a, you know, a set would be like three different constants, and then you have those multiple times. So it's kind of the like the spreadsheets you have on the home screen. So constant set colon video in puts. Okay, so that is a reference down to the constant set right there. That's what will drive this. Shift levels as a style, that's okay. Page size, let's just try five. Page size from constant set, we won't do that. The HVC alias prefix, this will be, and by the way, let's just go up here. Actually, the moment I typed in five or six, notice what's happening up here, all right? See, now it's six. Okay, so it's actually generating behaviors. These are the automatically generated behaviors that the generator is making for us right now. So the thing is, the name of the behaviors the, or the aliases that will get mapped correctly onto these buttons are prefixed A, 2, 3, 4, and so on. This is why I want to add the HVC alias prefix and type in A, because as I do that, we'll now get A, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's pretty nice. Okay, then we have this uh, option label prefix. I'm not totally sure about that. And then because we are driving these shift levels, it's asking for the what is the variable name that has um, the power to change shift level. And we call that shift. We do need to change that a little bit. But if I just type that in here, then you can see that we have now this variable generated up here. But it's actually superseded by this one down here because the the um, this one was defined before the variable up here. So you can see that the, the shift layer that is on top here will be active the moment the variable shift gets the value to. And that is not a value that this variable down here can actually accommodate. However, if we go down here, if we show more, if we accept any value and we set it to two, set. Then now the, the shift variable down here is two, although this is normally not an allowed option, then it actually did enable our layer up here. So there you see, uh, that was possible. Now um, let's just remove that. And now you can see it falls back to its default. But what I basically want to do would be to type in two as the value for shift. So that means as we are now manipulating the shift variable down here, either by, I mean, we can go in here and we can use the, um, the shift key that we defined in the first episode right here. You know, it's going as I'm holding, it's changing to two or it's off, two or off. Now we are sort of having the value two imposed on us. And that is because the generator right here is just using that value. And there's no way we can change that, um, I think. <laughs> but let's not do that in this episode, at least. Now it was quite easy to change our shift variable to just use the value two instead. By the way, it also means that we can now discard off this shift level that came from, from before. And um, so we, we see that we have these automatically generated behaviors and it is changing between them. You know, when we have the shift key, it also is probably so that they are defining these behaviors, but it's currently empty. So going back to the generator, the final thing we need to do is to create the template behavior. So we create this, go in here, and then we pick our, we had this master behavior, set preview with tally, set preview with tally. That one. Okay, so um, we see that this master behavior is chosen and uh, we should not need to set the set value, but this um, it should actually pick this up at the moment, so I need to check. Okay, I had to investigate a little bit because I'm a little bit surprised that I don't see the input numbers right here, but it turned out that it's something I needed to fix in the JSON code when I looked at the master behavior right here. The master behavior had, let's just see if we can fix it right here. This one constant set with a blank match value. And that seemed to trick me in this case. So I just removed that away, save the current file. And now the numbering that is supposed to be imported 
was imported in my behaviors. I can't tell you exactly what the long-term solution of this would be, but I found the issue and now we are back on the track of what the whole thing was about. That was to say, hey, the generated behaviors will use this behavior and then it will apply match value coming from the constant set to each to this behavior on each button. And that is how they differ in the functionality, but they are drawing from the same master behavior. So as you can see, generators closely linked with master behaviors and constants, constant sets to generate automatic keys for selecting cameras or for selecting input sources and so on. Now, the final thing that we want to do is to um, actually explore a little bit here, because first of all, you've also seen that I only have like six keys defined. And in fact, we have nine. So, um, but that's a basic matter of changing the page size to nine, you would think at least, because at least that gives us up to A1 up to A9. And then on key number eight here, we have that video source number eight. Let's just quickly try to hold the uh, shift key down here and see what happens. No, wait, we need to be in simulation mode like this. Okay, so you can see that it changes around. Maybe if we have a little more space, we can see it all together. Let's just check. So I hold down shift and we see sources 10 and 11 over here. That's nice, shift. So we have that in place, but we still miss source number nine. Now this is related to HVC key maps. The thing is that um, this key was originally created as an alias called MP because that was the name of the key. And that is currently inside our key map. You'll find A1 is mapped to button number one. You'll find that A2 is mapped to button number two, etc. You can find A5678 is mapped to buttons 5, 6, 7, 8. And button number nine, this one, I know that is number nine. It's, it's not obvious from here, but I know it is. Well, I can figure it out at least. Is linked, or the alias MP is linked to button number nine. But now I'll change that to A number nine and voila, you get this A9 is now gonna be mapped to panel number one, uh, hardware component number nine. Okay, so um, th th that's the fix that we needed to do because generators will always generate a series of behavior aliases or keys that are just you know numerated like this. And then you need to make sure that they get mapped onto the proper keys in on the controller uh, as you move forward. Final thing we want to do is to make sure that this constant set is on the home screen. And that probably also requires us to do a little bit of JSON digging and so on. See, if you look at how other configurations are made, you'll often find that inside a configuration like this one, you have a constant set like this, which is grayed out. And then you find the constant set also down on the layer below. And that's what we'll do right now. The system automatically does it when you include configurations, then it will go and grab those constant sets and move in here, especially if those constant sets have, uh, let me see, there's like a feature that you need to enable. Maybe we need to, it's the one called highlight, um, or at least highlight needs to be on the level over here. So, okay, I have to admit, we need to go to the JSON editor right now, or that is the only way I know how to do it. And then on the root level, we'll basically collapse this one and then we'll just copy this and we have it here on the right fusion live. Let's just check. Okay, so we take this constant set and we go back to the config tab and then we move up here on this layer, uh, which is actually defined inside of this one. Let's just go and edit this. And you see layers include right fusion. And here I'll just put in my constant set. Let me just check with commas. You need to, you cannot have a comma at the end. Let's format the code. So watch for all the small red lines. Okay, this is nice. And uh, I want that little flag, front end meta highlight true. Okay, this is all great. Save current file. And then let's just go back to configuration. First of all, we wanna see this. You see, this is grayed out. This is the grayed out situation. And this is the constants that can now, if we go to the home screen, be edited from the home screen. Now it says video input here. We have 11 entries. And um, yeah, let's have the simulator a little bit on the side. Can we break it out into, uh, let me see. Let's just open up the simulator in a separate tab and move the simulator out into a window of its own. Because it's, um, it's sort of nice to be able to see what happens when I move these around. If I go back into my home screen, 
Um, you have seen that before, but I just want you to enjoy the fact that we have created our own little constant set that is now on the home page. And as I'm reorganizing these inputs, they get reorganized on, on this one. I can also, yeah, obviously remove them and the whole bunch is just going to move ahead. So, hey, guys, this is us creating a constant set that is now generating our inputs on the LiveFly controller. Isn't that amazing? I think that's really, really awesome. And um, that's almost everything I wanted to tell you. Um, maybe that was just like like one thing. Let's just remove a bunch of these just to make it like a really simple controller for our users. So you see, we have now just a, a few inputs here. Just one final note, and that is kind of linked to the inheritance. You have seen it before. If, if, we, if you go in here, then you have seen before that um, the variables that we had up here with the PVC, like the variables shift is overtaken by the first definition of the shift variable right here. We saw the same inside PDC where we had a variable cam menu that gets overtaken by this one. There we even added something called expand scope and capture so that this variable is actually drawing data out of these depending on which layer is available. And then down here we have sort of the same because this one gets grayed out, overtaken by this constant set. If this constant set was not there, we would see what is originally inside of here. And we could go here and we could edit these. But notice that just like with variables, we have something called always define. If I set this, it means that now this gets re-enabled and this doesn't matter anymore. So this constant set in here is now going to dominate. And if we change around in that constant set, this one, we see sources moving around. But most of the time, the point is that uh, this constant set would be like when you import one of our configurations, you get a, a bunch of, you know, just standard ATEM, you know, inputs. And then you can go change them on the home screen because we make this copy to highlight it on the home screen. But if you have this always defined flag set, then that is always going to live. But we can also disable that. And now we are back to the one that gets imported on the home screen, which is probably what you want. Thank you for watching this far. I think it has been an exciting journey. And you, if you have followed along, you should be able to absolutely figure out the last bits and pieces to fully uh, configure your RackFusion Live.